I'm going to show you how to choose a fish, cook a fish, and then eat it. Here I've got a couple of porgies. Porgy is also known as a bream. I've got the fins still on it, the scale still on it, the mohawk, definite keeper. I've got the tail. What you're looking for is a fish that looks like it's still alive, which means that it hasn't been dead for long. You want a bright, clear eye. If you get a chance to lift up the gills, you want them to be bright, blood looking, fresh. And it's gonna have a smell that's kind of like the ocean. It's not gonna smell fishy. It's gonna smell like seawater and fresh. I'm gonna rinse this quickly and then we'll prepare it. I'm running a cold stream of water around and over the fish and through the fish to get rid of anything that might not be visible. And now I'm taking a paring knife and removing any of the scales that the fishmonger may have left. I'm patting the fish dry and I'm using a real towel, not a paper towel, because I'm environmentally conscious. It just means I have more laundry to do later. I want to get rid of as much moisture and water as possible so the spices and herbs that I'm going to add don't get diluted. Now I'm scoring the fish just with a regular chef's knife, a line on a diagonal. So once I do add the spices and the herbs, the flavors really seep into the flesh of the fish. I have some beautiful, coarse sea salt. You can use any salt. Um, I like to use sea salt because I feel like the fish feels more at home because it's from the sea. I'm really rubbing the salt all over the fish. It's kind of uh, like a brine. It's going to make sure that um, every single cavity in the fish gets a little bit of salt and salt really brings out the flavor. I'm going to set the fish to the side while I prep the rest of the ingredients now. I've got a lemon, we're going to get all of this stuff somehow into the fish and the lemon gives it a lot of flavour but it also looks really pretty. I'm cubing up the butter into small cubes. Porgy is quite a lean fish and I think it does need a lot of fat to make it delicious. Aside from adding butter, I'm going to rub some olive oil all over it. Taking some time, just shoving it right into the cavity, it'll really fill the fish with a tiny aroma. I'm taking some lemon, beautiful lemon rounds, and just stuffing it here and there. I really love butter so much. It improves almost anything, especially a leaner fish like this one. So I'm just putting butter all over the place. But feel free to omit the butter and just use more oil if you'd rather a dairy-free option. Now I'm greasing the tray. I'm just pouring some oil right onto it and smearing it the old-fashioned way, but feel free to use parchment paper or a spray. I'm now transferring the prepped fish right onto the sheet tray. You're welcome to prepare it on the sheet tray. I'm grinding some fresh pepper right over the fish. I preheated the oven to 400 degrees and now I'm going to let the fish sit in there for about 10 minutes. Your first clue to know that the fish is ready is that the room is going to smell good. The fish is now ready to eat and I don't want to delay because I want to eat it while it's nice and hot and placing it right onto my plate. So uh, now it's time to eat this fish. For some people that might be a little bit daunting so that's what I'm here for. I'm going to hold your hand through this experience. Now, what you've got is a top layer of flesh and you don't want to go in too deep. You don't want to cut it like a steak because then you'll break the bone. You want to keep the bone whole so you can remove it. Um, so first I'm going to just dig into the top. You can see that the flesh is coming right off the bone, which means it's just cooked. Okay. I'm going to just get a little more lemon, pepper, Okay, I'm gonna dive in. So I'm just gonna take little bits from the top. Mm, yum, it's, it's really great. If you're careful, you won't get any bone yet. See that? There's the bone coming out. Mm. One has to stay alert while eating fish with bones. Here is kind of hard stuff, so you wanna get Gently there, pull it away. There's a few bones here, but they're little. You won't die if you eat them. This is a really delicious fish. It's local, you can actually fish yourself and, and cook it up. But if you're a little intimidated by the bones, snapper is a little less bony, so it'll, it'll be a little 
clear in the front. I'm just gonna take my knife and help, help this skeleton up a little. Just to clear it off, just like that. I'm gonna lift, gonna separate the head. Um, this is the part that we don't want, okay. Okay, now, this bit here, I'm not gonna bother with. It's mostly bone and it has a funny taste sometimes. Put that there, I've got what it's called. I've got the side bone bit. See, you don't have to know what the bones are called to eat a fish with bones, that's rule number one. So now, I'm left with what you would know, you know, what you would call like a fillet a lot of the time. It's just the bottom part. You can remove more bone. You need like a little side plate to put stuff on. Okay. Mm. This is a really simple recipe, as you can see, with really minimal ingredients, but it does take a long time to eat and you have to concentrate. So you really need to sit down, which is a good thing. Uh, you can also send this video to guests if you're having a whole fish dinner and you are not sure if they're gonna be comfortable eating it, they need to watch this. Thanks so much for all your comments on past videos. Please let me know if you have any suggestions or questions and don't forget to hit like. See you next time. Oh, yay! <laughs>